Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Scheer, and I'm so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with us. I am so excited because today I am joined by Dorsa Lotfazar, one of our amazing clients and community members here at Apply Yourself. And we are not only celebrating that she has received admission to her one of her law schools of choice here in Ontario, but all of the hard work that she has put in along the way. And we're going to talk all about that, what kind of hard work it takes to get into law school and how Dorsa did that. So Dorsa has recently graduated from the University of British Columbia with a major in psychology and a minor in law and society. She has always had a passion for law and will begin her journey through law school in September. Dorsa, how amazing is it to hear that, firstly, and to to be doing it? It feels great. It just feels like all the hard work has finally paid off. And I'm I'm just so excited to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you. So for all of our listeners who don't know you and who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you in our group sessions, tell us a little bit about yourself, where, you know, a little bit about your background and how you came to this place here today. Well, I like me and my family immigrated to Canada, I think in 2014. And so like I began high school shortly after coming here and went to undergrad at UBC where I majored in psychology, just out of a lack of like scarcity of choices and like just not having anything law related to major in. But like my passion for law really began in high school when I took law 12 and I just realized, well, this could be one way that you can like, have an impact in someone's life and help them. And so I've kind of always like had that in my mind when like during undergrad. And so finally, when I was preparing for law school, preparing for the LSAT, I was in one of the events that UBC Law Society was hosting, I came across an ad for a workshop that you were having. And I think it was great. And it was just such a coincidence that I joined that workshop because I it was like after a long day of me just preparing for the LSAT. And I just was like, I, I really need help with the applications. And during that workshop, I, during that one hour, you said something that was so important that I could like completely missed in my applications process, which was like the ABS. But I was like, okay, I need help preparing. And this is obviously the way I've been doing. I'm not like thinking about all the steps ahead and I don't know how the process works. I need help with getting through that. So I am just so glad I found you and I joined this community so that I was able to get the help that I needed to start the application process and finally get here. And it has been such a pleasure for me too. So, you know, I am so excited to talk all about what it's been like for you, what it's been like for you as part of the community. And also to talk about really sort of the more detail-oriented points of effort, strategy that you learned and implemented in order to successfully be admitted to law school in Ontario. Like huge, huge. Because I remember during our conversations, you, you were really wanting Ontario. We applied across the country, but you really were looking forward to Ontario. And so what did that feel like when you got in? Tell me, like, take me through what happened. It, I mean, it was amazing. I, I remember when we were having a discussion about which law schools I should apply to. And you told me to apply to places that I would be willing to go. And I think even that was good advice because it el- eliminated a lot of the other options that I wasn't really <laughs> trying to pursue. But like, I just didn't know what the process should feel like. Should I apply everywhere? Should I apply to like all the top schools or like, and so finally getting into one of the schools that I, it was in my like dream list and just to get that letter, it, it felt amazing and liberating. It just felt like all the hard work that I did and, and we did together and all that growth would finally, you know, paid off. And you got early acceptance. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you did. Yeah. You got early acceptance. And so that's huge because 
now you can be relieved. (laughs) You can feel relief that you know that you've been accepted. And how has that sense of relief been for you? How has that changed how you're living your days? It it makes my days like more pur- purposeful because then now I know wh- where my journey is going to take me and and the next steps are much clearer ahead. So it just doesn't feel like I'm like stuck in a loop or that you know I I'm uncertain of my future. It just feels like the path is cleared and like that fog is like lifted. The fog has lifted. That's really powerful. <laughs> That's really powerful. And so. Let's talk about your sort of first experience with the community. What did it feel like to gain access to like the whole content hub and to have our live weekly sessions together, meeting other members of our community who are going through the same thing and also working one-on-one with me? And, And so tell me how that experience was for you. The, the courses, the, the modules, actually, they came at such a critical time because it was just before the deadlines. And so every single lesson I listened twice and I listened over and over again and I tried to implement it because, again, that was the step that I'd missed. And so nobody tells you that. Nobody talks about that. So it was just such a great support to have, you know, a community where this is ev- what's everyone going through. And it's not like your friends will give you like unsolicited advice or other people who, you know, have your like, best interest at heart but like really don't know how to help you so I think like more than that I think our one-on-one sessions were really like more therapeutic for me because it just put my life in perspective and it like made all of the things made all of my achievements and efforts it showcased it in a light that I didn't even think before so it was kind of like I have a sort of an imposter syndrome and then I was able to finally see all the hard work that I had put in and be able to showcase that in a way that's, you know, not scarcity minded or in a way that, you know, it just showcases myself and my experiences. I think that you brought something up, which is obviously one of our founding principles and philosophy here, which is we have a non-competition policy here, right? Mm -hmm. So we do not tolerate competition and competitive behavior from anybody in our community. Now, The thing is that we attract people into our community who are like-minded in that way. So that means that everyone here is supportive of each other, is encouraging of each other. Even though the processes themselves are competitive, we are not. And that allows us to focus on you, to focus on your core values and your principles. So how did it feel for you to become a part of a community that was strictly non-competitive and to have the support? of people around you who were going through the same thing. And and not only for law schools, for medical school, for master's programs, for other professional school programs. How did that feel to be part of this new community? I think that's the most important part. And that was one of the things that I think personally helped me get through all of those hard, un- uncertain times. And that's why, because I feel like, I like to call it therapeutic because it was really, it was it was just about you and it wasn't about like, you know, the competition and what other people are doing. And, and you know, it was just a great space to have where your, like your LSAT score, your potential, like, you know, GPA, everything, all of that didn't matter. Just it was just about your experiences and just really telling the admissions committee who you are without like, you know, just giving them a grade to look at. And I think that really took the pressure off even preparing for the LSAT because it just felt like, you know, I'm not that number, whatever I'm working towards. It's just, I have so much more to offer than that score on like one LSAT like test or like two. That's right. That's right. And so how do you view competition now versus how you viewed it before? Well, I think before I would just look at competition as an obstacle and something that I have to overcome. But now it's like it's competition almost almost doesn't matter. And I just want to phrase this carefully, but I, I think it's when you have that confidence about what you're offering and your able your abilities and capabilities, it just feels like what other people have to offer. It's it's great for themselves, but it's it doesn't have any like impediment for you. It's just that that mindset alone was such an important thing because I think as we talked about, I would look at other what other people are doing and like look at forums and look at other people's journeys and just think, oh, maybe I what I'm offering is not enough. And and so just having that moment to think, 
okay, well, what they're doing is like everyone's going through this process. Everyone is uncertain. Everyone has their own insecurities. And so just focusing on yourself is the most important thing you should be doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's so, so powerful, something that you said, which is the competition almost doesn't matter because everyone is doing their best for themselves. Whatever they have going on for themselves is what's going on. And it's not an impediment for you. And so that allows you to just open your mind to yourself and really value yourself, boost your self-esteem, and really be able to focus on your core. Who are you at the core? And how can we demonstrate that through your materials to humanize you, to help the committee really see who you are, the growth that you've experienced, the significance of your experiences, and see you as a person, not as a number. And it worked. It worked for you. So how does that feel that it worked? <laughs> it just feels that you will, you know, it, it confirms that, you know, this is, I think this is the right way to go about it. It's not about the numbers. It's not about the competition. I think everyone should just focus on their experiences and showcasing what makes them unique. And that's such an important thing that like it, when the admissions committee are asking about you, like to write about your experiences in like 2000 characters or whatever, that's not, that's not what they're that's not what most people pick up. Like most people think they should write about something that law schools want to hear or they should somehow showcase themselves in comparison to the competition. Mm. But it's actually about writing about you despite the competition. And and that's the, I think, piece that nobody talks about. And that's why it was so great to finally have a community where that's the that's the mantra, you know, it's not your your you. Yes. And the competition doesn't matter. Ah, you've got it. You've got like, oh, this is, I, I'm so, it's just, you make me so happy. This, everything that you're saying makes me so happy because you've, you've got it. Like that is the point of being here and it works. And so I'm, it's just, I'm so excited for you. I'm so happy for you. And you brought up law school forums. Yeah. And so you'll remember that coaching call that we had, our group coaching call, at this point, it was just just like a few weeks ago. We turned that coaching call into a podcast episode. You're, you're nodding. Yeah. For those of you listening and who can't see the nodding, she's nodding a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she remembers. And we turned that call, our group coaching call in the Success Society, into a podcast episode. And now I was very passionate in that episode. We're going to link to that episode in the show notes. But Dorza, can you give me your experience of that conversation in our, in our all and, and sort of what led up to that conversation? I think what, what, what led up to that was weeks of me <laughs> having a, a toxic cycle of just constantly checking the forums to hear what other people are doing. And, and it was just like, like you said, it was a step backwards. It was after all that growth and like one-on-one time that we had together and like all the sessions in the community, I was just, just that period where you're waiting for a decision it it can make you go a little bit crazy while you're waiting. Yeah. And it's really important actually what you do in that time because that's like you don't want to have the reverse growth I had. And I at that point I was I would be yeah checking the forums every three, four hours. I would oh wake gosh. up in the middle of the night checking to see if anyone else has done news. And it was just it was really toxic. And I remember when we had that call, I just I've never actually touched another like just clicked on another forum since then because I realized you know that no the work that I put in was enough and and you know if even if it didn't work this cycle around it will at some point and I I I should just not be looking at something that's not even fact checked and not that's even right. yeah that's right that's right and so you know forums are really they're born out of insecurity and it's it you know you're absolutely right that that period between submission of your materials and hearing back is absolute torture like probably even more torture than the application process itself yeah. <laughs> and so it's 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 so important you're right what you do during that time that you just keep moving forward during that time you keep working you keep going to the gym you keep living your life i think i even said in that coaching call which is the episode now that you continue that, that, that I almost rather you do like a billion other things than check those forums, like hang out with friends, live your life, sleep, watch Netflix, do anything other than that. 
<laughs> and so what have you done or what did you do? Like after that conversation, what did you do instead of checking the forums? I will, I remember even as I was studying for the LSAT and doing like preparing my applications, I would be going to the gym, going for like mental health walks and like spending time with family. But after submitting, you know, it's like, now what? And I was, I was just completely isolated. I stopped going to the gym. I stopped going for walks. I stopped like, I like eliminated my social interactions because I was just so like not in that right headspace to be interacting. And I was was so anxious. And so after our talk, I actually just decided to go for a walk and I, I went, started to go to the gym again and I started to socialize and do other stuff. For example, I, I started to take a couple of courses like accounting or like other like extracurricular courses to build up my resume. And I realized you were right. You know, your time is better spent doing literally anything else than <laughs> tipping yourself in that toxic loop. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. I want to talk also about the process of showcasing yourself. So we do many things in our community and as part of Mastering Academic Applications that help you to showcase yourself. So from the very beginning where we work on visualization through to organizing your materials, through to ordering a transcript, of a copy of your transcripts for yourself, the way you reach out to your referees, creating your CV and your resume, creating your autobiographical sketch, your personal statement. How did all of those components of the process help you to showcase yourself? Because everything played a different role. I think the most important way that it helped showcase myself was to give a purpose to all the things that I had done, which, you know, sometimes you would do things without even knowing why you're doing them. And I think that was one of the reasons when we were having one-on-one sessions, I thought, well, you know, how do you know me better than I did? Because it just gave my experiences a perspective that, I was unaware of essentially. Yeah. Placing value on what you've done. Yeah. Right. Like we go through so many experiences in pursuit of admission that now when it comes to actually putting pen to paper, so many of us think, oh my God, I haven't done anything at all. Or, oh, what I've done isn't good enough. Everybody else has so much more than I do. And so the process of going through your CV, your resume, your autobiographical sketch in that order, your personal statement, your short answer questions, whatever the schools need, allows you to actually actually connect the dots. And so how, how was that connecting of the dots for you? What was like the moment of realization that you had that, oh, like I have done a lot. What did that feel like for you? I think that was during our one-on-one sessions where we were just trying to make a cohesive story of all my experiences and the way we tried to frame that. And then it just sort of made sense to me. Oh, I have I have actually done a lot for all the things that, you know, matter to me. And I think just having that realization was like, you know, that was the big light bulb moment where even if I didn't get into law school this time, this cycle, I would have still felt like so good about myself because I at least had the comfort of knowing that, you know, my, all that work, you know, that still counts for something, even if it's not leading to an admission at this cycle. Mm. That's, that's really important because it allows you to almost let go of what you can't control, which is the admissions committee. And you can totally feel proud of everything that you've done. So what you did and what the purpose of this is, is like exactly what happened is that you bring all of that focus internally and you let go of anything external, external pressures, external stresses, any external validation, any external approval that you're looking for. You really bring the focus inward, which is where it needs to be in this process. Exactly. I think I would really agree with that because that's how it felt. It felt liberating to know that all those efforts, you know, they, that, that like, that was all me. And, and so that imposter syndrome that I was referring to, that was, that was how I felt before finding this community because I, I was always insecure about my experiences and, you know, not like being like even having English as a second language. I used to think of that as a barrier until I kind of 
saw that as maybe, well, you know, my first language can help me like help potential clients. And for example, mm-hmm. even that was like turning all of your insecurities into something that, you know, you can use as a fuel to just move forward. Yeah. Insecurities, turning them into superpowers. <laughs> exactly. Right. Because you are working at law firms and you are helping clients in your first language. Yes. And so you're actually putting that into practice. And so much opportunity is available to you because you speak more than one language. It was never a weakness, right? And so just that mindset shift of realizing the value of what you offer is huge. It's huge. And so that brings me to the diversity statement. And I remember that when we started working on the diversity statement, the way that you had framed it at first is not where it ended up at the end. So can you tell me about that process for you? Yeah, I think even in the diversity statement, what I was like, my initial draft was, again, focused on the competition. And I said that, well, you know, I can offer a perspective that is missing in like, or that could be missing in classrooms. And we kind of turned that into something else that wasn't really about what's missing from the classrooms, but what I can offer like a new insight into the discussion. And I think even like, you know, that shift in mindset that every step of like every single paragraph of that application process, I think that's, that's where the real growth and the real realization for me happened. When we were working on your diversity statement, what you brought me at the beginning was not how it ended up being drafted in the end. That was not your final version, of course. And I remember during working on your diversity statement, I asked a lot of questions. I asked a lot of questions and as we worked through the diversity statement together, I remember that you you got emotional and you said, you know me better than I know myself. And so what was that process like for you in talking through your experiences for your diversity statement and what allowed you to feel that way as we were working on your materials? Yeah, so I think the diversity statement as first, my initial draft was focused on something that I could be offering and or so it's something that was missing. And then we talked about what I could be offering to the discussion. And I remember you were asking me why I why do you want to say essentially the things that you were saying? And it had a lot to do with my background. And I was even unaware of that. So that was something that was kind of pushed under everything in like my subconscious. And then I we talked about like, you know, my experience with the law as a kid in, you know, Iran where like we grew you grow up essentially as a woman who was powerless and voiceless. And I was kind of was hoping to turn the law into something that could actually give voice and power to people instead of taking away their power. And that was I think the missing piece that Really, when we talked about it, it got me all emotional. And then we tried to frame that diversity statement in a way that showcased that and my experiences. And I think that was really powerful because in a way, I think that that even that one session was like really therapeutic and it just brought so much light and it just, yeah, it, it, yeah. What did that session give you clarity on? It gave me clarity on why I want to become a lawyer because at some point I think it became like an automatic decision that I was trying to you know achieve without like you know taking a moment and to actually think and ask myself why and like trying to draft that question for the law school application you, you know it forces you to have those questions and have those discussions with yourself and it was in in our sessions together that I realized well this is because of all my experiences and it wasn't something that I was actually consciously thinking of. And I think that can be also something powerful that, you know, people can, that people should, I think, focus on their law school essays, it's their experiences and why they want to do things in a way that showcases their background, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, obviously I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> So talk to me a little bit about the other people that you've met as part of the community. Talk to me about the the sort of sense of support, you know, the, the fact that, you know, we show up 
to our weekly sessions. And everyone is so amped up to be there because everyone loves being there. Like I love being there too. So how do you, you give me sort of a sense of your, your experience of, of other people here? I think, I think that part has also been really great because every time, like you said, I get on call, everyone is so energetic and they're all so supportive of each other. And, you know, for me to, you know, I've been out of school for, I think, a few months now. And to hear um, about people who are still in school and having like, you know, those discussions about, you know, how they can become better versions of themselves at school and, and to do things that, you know, they normally wouldn't have done. And to actually hear about other people's growth, it makes me even feel better because I it makes me feel like we're in a community of people who are like-minded and also who help to to elevate each other to help elevate each other yes and and I can also learn so many things that I wouldn't otherwise because it's you know it's problems that I haven't encountered yet but the advice you give is still applies and so for example we're just talking about overthinking the other day and, yes, you know, we it's, something, <laughs> it's something I wouldn't have like you know brought up myself but you know the the advice you give to all of us and you know how people are like you know the the way the support that we have I think it's really great even if it's not like specifically tailored to you I think anyone still benefits from that yeah I agree with you because everything that we talk about is totally transferable not just for applications but for life especially as part of the Success Society. So for those listening, the Success Society is our Tuesday at noon Eastern time coaching call where we talk about everything other than applications. So anything holding you back in terms of mindset, and this is where the overthinking piece came in. We talk about dynamics, we talk about circumstances, barriers, challenges, and and our wins. We also celebrate wins. We do that also on Wednesdays on our Mastering Academic Application coaching call, but that the Wednesdays are focused on applications. And so we, yeah, we definitely spoke about overthinking and we reframed overthinking as a superpower. And maybe we'll record another podcast episode on overthinking because, you know, something that I said was, you know, overthinking is actually just the way some people think. Like I would consider myself to be an overthinker, but that's a superpower because it allows me to serve you and help you and have, and, and have the impact that, that, that this community has and thinking is is like the root of all action, right? And so I think that it's it's so important that we talk these things through because one of our community members brought that up as something that they felt ashamed of, that somebody had used as an insult, like, oh, you're overthinking this. And actually what we realized is that overthinking can actually be a superpower when we use it for good rather than evil. <laughs> and so the point is that Anything that we talk about in our community is transferable in applications, outside of applications, into the professional world, into your personal lives, into your professional lives. And we just experience so much elevation and so much growth from each other. And I just, this community, there's no other community like it. Would you agree? Yes. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't seen one. We're not going to see one that's, that's the same as this because it's the, it's our community members who make it what it is. It is amazing. And everyone just enjoys it so much, myself included, myself included. So I, I think having a community where all the advice is is like really valuable, but also comes from a place of, you know, like it's essentially you having gone through the same process yourself and then on the admissions committee and having like really genuine, honest discussions with all of us and, and you know, trying to turn all of those insecurities into growth and making you see yourself in a different light. I think it's so valuable and it's so, I think, needed when you're going through a process that can feel really scary and alone and dark. And I think just becoming, I've I've felt essentially more confident in those last few months that we have been together. And I think I can't thank you enough for everything that you have done. I'm, I'm so, I'm just, I continue to just be so grateful and so proud. And so what would you say to somebody who's not quite sure whether they need this kind of community? What would you say to them? Someone who's maybe on the fence about, about inquiring more about the community. 
I would say even if you're you're thinking about inquiring more help, even if you're at that process where you're doubting yourself, a little bit, I think you need that support because unless you're feeling 100% confident, and I would say even at that point, you might need some additional support. But even if you feel like, you know, 99% confident in all the material and everything you're submitting, then I think you're going to want to have a second trained professional and, you know, like an amazing I had to look at those materials before you send it because it's essentially your future. And I'm just so glad I found you before the time that I submitted that because it, you, I would have probably had to wait another year just because I just didn't know what an ABS is or I was going to leave that space blank or something or, well, you know, because it's none of us have done that before. So, right. And you'll never do it again. And we'll never do it again. You know, it's like a one-time thing that there's no class for just submitting your material. So until now, until now, until now, <laughs> until now, and here we are. And yeah, so many people think. You know, I had somebody say to me the other day that you know, well, there's the ABS and there's a statement that's 750 words, but where do you showcase yourself? Like that's that's not a lot of space. I'm like, no, that's the space. That's all you've got. And so it's really, really strategic. And so I agree with you. I, I totally agree with you. I would have loved a community like this and a course to take me through every application cycle that I that I had been through. It would have been a lot less stressful. And the thing is, is yeah, you might be able to do it yourself. You could do it in a much more enjoyable way, making friends, peers, colleagues, and doing it faster than than if you were doing it on your own. Do you think you you did it faster? Yes. I, I feel like if, if I didn't come to you and I didn't work on the applications and like, you know, edit the, all the things that I was going to say, and I just like left it at that, I think that cost me, I think, an adhesion mm-hmm. the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Well, you obviously made amazing, amazing. You had amazing growth. You put in unbelievable effort and it paid off. So congratulations. Thank you. And so as we think about your next steps, how has the way that you felt about yourself changed since we started working together? And I want to preface that by saying that we've only been working together since the end of October 2022. And it's now March, April-ish when this podcast episode will air, maybe May 2023. And so how how has the way that, that that you view yourself, that you feel about yourself and your future, how has that changed from before we met well, I think simply put, I just, I feel enough. I feel confident. Mm. It's, it's such an underrated feeling, but I feel. <laughs> I love that. Oh my God, you are enough. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. I was not expecting that as your answer. I'm so happy it was. Keep going. <laughs> no, yeah, it was because, you know, I, maybe oh. it's like all those insecurities and everything. But, you know, now, now I feel enough. And, oh my God, and, you're going to make me cry. I think I might cry. This is the first oh. episode that I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you know, it's but it's just simply that, you know, I feel enough. And if and if I feel like right now, if any, I don't get any admission from any other law school, then, you know, it's kind of their loss. Oh, my God. I am <laughs> crying. I'm crying. <laughs> I get. Oh, my God. That is that is that is so meaningful. And that is like one of the most important things that you can feel about yourself. I agree. Oh my God. I'm so proud of you. I'm, I'm beyond, beyond. Thank you. Sorry. I didn't mean to make you cry. (laughs) No, I think, you know what? Like we're honest here. Whatever happens, happens, right? (laughs) Yes. Whatever happens, happens. And I, you know, it's, 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 it comes from such a place of number one, being in the position of an applicant, in the position of a student, in the position of not feeling enough that I like, I completely relate because here's the thing. I, I don't come to any of our sessions. I don't come to this work with a sense of entitlement 
with a sense of that, you know, I know best or that I know better, but I've had experience and I've been through it and I'm on the other side. And I have real tangible experience that gets results. And that's the truth. And because I've been through the process, some really hard processes, some very competitive processes where I didn't feel enough. And as a younger person, where we often feel so insecure that we are looking for external validation. I went through all this too, right? Like I'm not coming from a place of perfection. Like I have gone through this growth too, which is why I can, which is why I can serve. And so the fact that you're at a place where you can say, I feel like that I am enough. I I mean, I, 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 I just share in that, that internal validity that is so central to the rest of your life, how you think about yourself. And because for me, it's not just about the application, it's about your life, right? I always say that. And so that internal validity that you have, that you've worked so hard to have, sure, it 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 helps you on the applications, but it's going to help you in your relationships, in how, in how you advocate for yourself, in what you think of yourself when you're up against some really tough people who might not be so nice because we will always come across them. When there is a level of competition and how do we deal with that? There, there are... The, just the effects of feeling enough are so far reaching that this goes, I mean, this is what I'm talking about when I say it's about your life. It's it's so much more than the application. The application gets you there. That's where we start. But the fact that you've gone through this period of intense work, reflexivity, growth to feel that way, I mean, that's, that's all that, that's all like, I'm done. That's, that, that's like, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm happy. So two final questions. The first is if you could give a piece of advice to people who are applying to law school, what would it be? I would say, be conscious of what you're trying to do and do it to a limit that you know you can handle and just know that, you know, you overthinking again is fine and you're you're building your life you just you need to be mindful through the process and you don't need to actually push yourself yes, in a way to, that's unhealthy to, in a way that's unhealthy um, like you don't need to wake up at 6 a.m and do practice for 18 hours a day you don't need to you know completely isolate yourself from your friends and you don't need to do any of those things you just have to just keep in mind that you know you have a goal and and to push yourself to limits that you know you can handle and and ultimately just showcase yourself in a way that's unique for you and I think I think that's the key the important thing is like you know I think for me it took some time to feel enough but I, I feel like if everyone could already feel that and come from that place of growth in their applications in their like in their own like mind and headspace I think that's that would be my only advice Mm, I love that. I love that. And now final question, what is a piece of advice that you would give your younger self? I would tell my younger self that, you know, you're going to get through this and just to take things one step at a time while like all the while, you know, trust your brain and trust the process and just know that, you know, the, the hard work and all the hours you put through, like you put towards studying and towards basically rethinking about all the other steps in your life, you know, they're that all those hours that they're going to pay off. And I would say that's it. And and, and to also feel just, just be yourself, I guess. Mm, I think that's important too. be yourself because how often do we feel like we have to be somebody else or more or better when really we are everything that we need? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, Dorsa, I am celebrating you. I am celebrating your accomplishments. I am so proud of you. I know that the rest of the community also celebrated you the second that we heard your admission. And I continue to be grateful that you are a part of our community. And I look forward to continuing to support you as you just kick ass. (laughs) Thank you. 
And I just want to say it's it's really great to have this community because I feel like all the emotions and all the conversations we have is just so genuine and so honest. And then, you know, we turn all those insecurities into growth. And that's something really powerful and, and valuable. And I'm just I'm so glad to be here. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Thank you, Dorsa. And for those of you listening, thank you so much for being here today. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.